I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today I've got something a little special. I've had a lot of people asking about the Stanley 45 and the Stanley 55. They're both really amazing planes. They have a lot of bells and whistles and screws and slides and knobs and twibbles and this, that, and the other thing. But um, other than looking really cool on your shelf, are they actually useful in a shop? And the answer is yes. But uh, the Stanley 45 is a little simpler and the Stanley 55 is a little more complicated. And what are some of the differences between them? What can they do and what can't they do? So come along and let's take a look at it. So let's start with the Stanley number 45. Uh, this was the, the first major combination plane that Stanley came out with. There's also a Stanley 46, I think it is, and a few other little odds and ends, a Stanley 50. Uh, but the 45 is by far the most common. Uh, you can generally get this one at eBay for about $45 in the United States, um, shipping included. You can find them at uh, um, different places around, usually around $40 to $50. That's a, a going place, a going price price for one that needs a little work, but it's still in usable condition. Um, then you can get a, uh, a full set of irons for it. Basically, this is designed to replace a lot of your old wooden planes. So in this case, we have a bunch of straight cutters um, all the way from an eighth inch up to one inch. And then we have beads from an eighth inch to, I believe this one's a half inch. And then we have a sash iron, and this will actually make window sash, which is kind of a, uh, a really cool feature for this iron. So we'll get into that here in a minute. You can also get a lot of other cutters, and any of the cutters for the Stanley 55 uh, will fit the 45, at least the newer model 45s, um, any of the 45s that have this little notch that you can see uh, in the blade. So some of the uses for the Stanley 45, number one, a grooving plane. Um, you can make a groove with any one of these cuts from an eighth inch up to one inch uh, and make it in any depth you basically want um, up to the depth of the ski at some point it starts running into the hardware, which is three quarters of an inch. So that's most every groove you're going to want to make is within three quarters of an inch. You can also do beading and because you can slide the fence away from the rail, you can actually put beads in up to eight inches away uh, from your cut into the board. And that is extremely useful for doing beadboard. You can also cut tongue and groove with a tonguing iron. And this is actually one that's designed to fit with, I believe this one, yeah, that one right there. And so you can cut a groove with this and a tongue with that. Another use for the Stanley 45 is you can put in a slitting cutter and it can actually become a slitting plane. And basically what that does is it will cut thin stock material but it will do it without leaving a kerf. So you can theoretically put those pieces back together um, or if you need to actually make a cut without a kerf, uh, this is sometimes useful. Um, I've seen it used in a few box items. Um, I have honestly never used a, a cutter for the 45, but if you need it, it's there. So along with grooves, you can also do dados. Uh, if you look very closely here, there's actually a slitter or a knicker that you can rotate and put in the ski so that it will actually just barely stick out and it will nick the fibers ahead of the iron. That will allow you to cut cross grain without tearing out as you go along. And there's actually a knicker on both sides. So this one is a little harder to see. I don't know if you can see in there. So the Stanley 45 basically has three main parts and you can put them together in different configurations. It has the main skate, which uh, the handle is attached to. Then it has the secondary skate, which can slide on, wiggle that on, and that can provide a secondary support to the iron. Now the fence on the 45 has two different holes. It has a lower hole and a higher hole. And if you put it in the lower hole, this allows you to slide the fence right up to the iron so you could cut a rabbit. And this would then slide right along the edge of the wood and the iron would cut all the way to the all the way to the side but you can also slide it into the higher hole and this then allows you to go past the iron and you can then cut a thinner rabbit with a larger iron so rather than using um, a smaller iron uh, you can use the larger iron to cut immediately up to the fence rather than pushing this up against the iron 
So that's about it for the 45. Uh, there's a few other bits and bobs and things you can put onto it, and I could really go into it a lot deeper, but for right now, I'm just going to be showing a lot of the differences between the 45 and the 55. But the 55 has several other features. Number one, the most obvious, is that it has a second fence. Um, it doesn't have this front knob, and I, I I rarely use that front knob. I end up finding myself grabbing it somewhere else, and so I really like being able to grab the fence. It allows you a much better control over um, its twisting and turning. But the other neat thing about the fence is that these can actually rotate, and they can slide to 45 degrees. And this allows you to then run up the corner of a beam. So you can actually put this on a beam and put a bead running down the beam, or you could use it as... The second big feature that the 55 has that the 45 does not have is that the second skate can actually adjust up and down. So I can loosen this knob and this knob, and then I can actually adjust that skate to slide up and down the iron. Now, anytime you're using a straight iron, that's really not a problem because you want the skate to be at the same height at one side as the other. But anytime you start getting into really heavily mold molded molding planes, then you want to have a skate over here, but if the skate's over here, it's actually sticking up higher than the blade. And if you don't have a skate over here, then this will want to twist on you, and that might cause issues. So when this skate can slide up and down, you can actually adjust the skate to be perfectly set. This way you can set it lower than the other so that there is always a skate in contact with the, with the wood um, so that you actually do have some kind of a sole. It's not a complete sole, but a partial sole. The other item that sets the 55 apart is that it comes with a few other bits normally. Number one, the shorter rods. Uh, some of the later 45s also come with the shorter rods. Um, and then this tool, which actually will bolt in here and become a secondary depth stop. Um, there are also some other uses into it, and this can actually be a fairly useful tool. I honestly have never used it, and I would love to hear from someone else who has and how often they do. Um, but other than that, that's what it is. But the one big thing that set the Stanley 55 apart from the Stanley 45 is the number of irons. So the Stanley 45 came with one box worth of irons, and the Stanley 55 was said to be able to replace 55 different planes. And so you can have 55 different irons in here that will all be able to go into the Stanley 55. Um, everything from molding irons to hollows and rounds to, to curve outs uh, to windows to sashes to tongue and groove um, to beads of all kinds and sizes. It really just has an immense amount of capabilities. Yes, it takes a little bit of time to set up, and it takes a bit of time to work through, but it is um, a fairly straightforward plane. So there's some of the major differences between the Stanley 45 and the 55, and I'm going to be using them quite a bit in the shop, uh, especially in the next couple weeks or so. So I'm thinking about doing a little more detailed video sometime on the 45 and possibly on the 55, so you may see those around me um, if they are uploaded yet. If not, then uh, keep an eye out for them. If there's something particular you'd like me to, to do or show you something with them, I'd love to, uh, love to do that. Just uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'm also thinking when I do a detailed video on them, I'm also going to be doing some of the, the cutting and showing you what the shapes actually look like. But uh, that's about it. So if you have a comment, please let me know in the questions below. If you'd just like to say, hey, I'd always like to uh, talk to you. If you like the video, please hit the like button or subscribe. And until next time, have a wonderful day.